Yo, what's up, guys? Teacher Paul over here, and today we are reacting to the animated history of Sweden. So we have done the animated history of Poland, Finland, and Australia. Now we're going to do the animated history of Sweden. If you guys are new to the channel, don't forget to like and subscribe. And yeah, I guess that's it. Let's go. This video is made. Also, go check out the original video. The link is in the description. Go support the channel. Always watch the original before watching the reactions and go <laughs> support them. Okay, they do a great job. Possible with the help of Dashlane. Download for free for 30 <clears> days <throat> and get 10% off with the code Sweeney and never forget a password Sweeney. again. Deep in the valleys of rivers and lakes lay the lands of forest and frost, which the Northmen call Uppsala. Uppsala. The sagas speak of Odin's family who ruled there as kings. The they Nordic speak of Frey who built a great temple and ruled the land from his throne on the hill. Of Fjolnir who drowned in a vat of mead while feasting in sea land. The pages of the sagas then tell of Svikthir who vowed to find Asgard traveling far and wide for many years. In his travels he found in Svithawid a large stone embedded in the ground with a dwarf at its entrance luring him inside to Asgard. Zvigthir entered the stone, bound by the charm of the dwarf, and was never seen again. In the quiet nights, the Northmen hear the scurry of elves which still cling to the undergrowth since the ancient days, and the trolls hiding in the forests and mountains. The Northmen fish and farm by day, and tell tales of heroes and monsters by night. Second World War. The animation is amazing. Scandinavia has been settled by Neolithic people for a very long time. But history as we know it really starts with the settlement of the area by the Indo-Europeans who produced the Nordic Bronze Age. With the collapse of the Roman Empire, many Germanic Scandinavians raided and settled further south in the vacuums of the old Roman provinces. The tribes that stayed developed the Proto-Nordic culture, an Iron Age society contemporary with the Great Migration period. The Proto-Norse society began mostly in the Straits of Katikat before spreading further into Scandinavia, with an economy based on farming, fishing and trade. In the far north, the land was inhabited by a different ethnic group called the Sami, a Sami. Uralic people native to the Arctic region. But by far what we know most about prehistoric Sweden comes from the Viking Age. One theory for how it began was a sudden explosion in population, and this larger society started competing with each other for very limited farmland. Food became more scarce, and soon Scandinavians were importing a lot more food through trade. How did they pay for this food? With raiding, of course. Oh, so, wow. with their expertise as warriors and sailors, they began a tradition of raiding coastal towns and villages in the Baltic Sea to fund their drastically imbalanced imports. So, instead of actually having a proper trade, they actually raided and took all of the the, the the resources. This, however, was deeply rooted in culture and tradition, because for a Viking, the greatest honor was to die in battle, with sword or axe in hand, so that Odin himself would take him up to his great hall in Valhalla. Odin. Swedish Vikings would raid and trade in lands as far away as Constantinople, where they were prized mercenaries called Varangians. Some Vikings from Rossa land called the Rus would go on to found our modern concept of Russia, by ruling over East Slavic tribes in Kiev and Novgorod. The raiders that returned to Sweden came back rich in gold, silver and slaves. Swedish Viking nobility tells of the legendary Ingling dynasty, said to trace its roots to Odin himself. But for many, the first leader recognized by most of the Icelandic sagas was Björn Ironside, son of legendary Danish warrior Ragnar Lothbrok. Ironside probably ruled what is today Upland, but in Norse tradition, most of the power laid Upland. with the Jarls, who collected taxes and enforced the law in their counties. By the early Middle Ages, Sweden was split between two rival powers, the Swedes and the Goths, who resisted more Goths. than a figurehead king for a lot longer than the Danes and the Norwegians. True unification would only come with Erik the Victorious, who introduced conscription, and Olaf Skjertkoning, who adopted Christianity. Oh, okay. Norse paganism would continue side by side with the new religion, until the former had mostly faded away by the 1300s, with Christian crucifixes slowly replacing Thor's hammer. The territories of Svealand and Gotaland seem to have been united officially by the rule of King Sverker I. Wait a second, so they had Thor's hammer around their necks, and then they, they started using the cross? 
That's interesting. <clears throat> but the newly united and newly Christianized kingdom was contested for rule by the House of Eric and the House of Zwickau for the next century. In addition, Swedish kings fought wars with Denmark and Norway, whose mm. realms and families were closely linked to their own. Yeah, so we saw this in another video about the history of um, Sweden. It wasn't the animated one. We saw that they, they had this conflict, but... <clears throat> <laughs> Sorry, my, I don't know. My throat is dry today. It is during this century too that the counties of Varmland, Janbaraland, and Helsingland became more closely tied to the Swedish kingdom, as well as areas settled in Finland called Esterland. Esterland. Swedish power in the eastern Baltic would only continue to increase, even launching crusades to unconverted Finnish tribes. The regent under the last king from the House of Eric Finland. was a man named Birger Jarl, who had his son ascend to the throne in an election in 1250. Birger Jarl founded the city of Stockholm by building a fortress on the old Viking settlement at the link between Lake Mälaren and the Baltic Sea. This would come to be Sweden's center of trade and government and eventual cultural capital. King Magnus Ladulus issued the Ordinance of Elsner in 1230, establishing a nobility and feudal levy, drastically increasing the small kingdom's power. They would go on to settle the Gulf of Bothnia and establish a fur trade monopoly with the Sami. Oh. But See, Magnus that's the fourth thing. inherited the that's the thing about Scandinavia. It's <clears throat> Scandinavian countries are so economically um, powerful, and you know, it's interesting that they were separate because if they had did ha, had done the trade from the very beginning. <clears throat> sorry, I believe that there was another video that I saw about. If Scandinavia was all one country, it would be the most powerful country ever. However, the Scandinavian region altogether still an amazing, amazing powerhouse. The throne of Norway in 1319, he was elected the king of Sweden in the convention of Oslo in the same year, making him king of both entities. But he was then kicked out by the nobles and replaced with Albert of Mecklenburg, and then he was in turn kicked out and replaced by Margaret of Denmark. By this point, Swedish nobles, fed up with the power struggles and eager to counter the trade monopoly of the Hanseatic League in the Baltic Sea, met in Kalmar to sign a joint personal union by which Margaret's nephew, Eric of Pomerania, was crowned king of all three domains, calling it the Kalmar Union. There we go. Although the union brought great riches and prestige to Scandinavia, it was controlled almost exclusively politically and economically by Denmark, the far more powerful of the three kingdoms, from their capitals at Roskilde and Copenhagen. A strong sense of regionalism developed around this time, with Swedish upper class viewing themselves as separate from Dano-Norwegians. A separatist party began to grow around a noble called Sten Sture the Younger, and during the coronation of Christian II of Denmark and Norway, the Swedish delegates refused him as king. That leaves me a question, actually. In modern times, is there this um, this air of super superiority in each of the countries? Because, like, in my country, Brazil, um, what happened was the Europeans, the Portuguese, came, the Portuguese came to Brazil, and they came through the ports of Bahia, and they brought a lot of slaves with them. Um, therefore, what happened was the north was <clears throat> was where they brought all of the slaves and <clears throat> sorry, I don't know what my throat is going through today. <laughs> and what happened was most of the Europeans um, went to the south region of Brazil. So in Brazil, the south had more Europeans, while the north had more um, African descendants and nowadays there's this there's this kind of like separation of the country where the north has an idea of kind of like the the left wing and the south has kind of like an idea of the right wing um and it is something that has been debated so many times and they have always tried to do a petition or you know, many people wanted to separate the South from the North because they are so different. And the the whole the whole um, reason is because <clears throat> the whole reason is because of the separation of um, the Europeans being more in the South and 
the North having more um, of the African um, descendancy, right? Guys, I'm so sorry. I don't know what happened to my throat today, but I I'm having a hard time talking. Shin would then conquer Sweden by force, and after executing more than 100 nobles in Stockholm, sparked a rebellion. <laughs> the rebels sorry. rallied around a noble called Gustav of the House of Vasa. It's funny because before <laughs> before starting the video, I <laughs> yeah, it was okay. The Swedish War of Liberation lasted just two years, with Gustav crushing the Dano-Norwegian troops and loyalists to Christian II. In 1523, he was crowned King of Sweden, and in the Treaty of Malmö, the Kalmar Union was split in two, the Kingdom of Denmark-Norway and the Kingdom of Sweden. Okay. Sweden was now a new kingdom with a brand new royal house, and circulating in this kingdom were new technologies and ideas of progressivism. The new printing press was spreading the romantic works of the Renaissance, as well as the works of Protestants in Germany. Change was in the air, and it was now clear that Sweden was on the cusp of a glorious new future. The middle class became obsessed with innovative ideas and provocative thought, an explosion of intellectual thought, with a university opening up in Uppsala. And innovation is something almost all of us can get behind, with new technologies and infrastructure dedicated to bringing us to an ever more interconnected world. But unfortunately, that means we live in the age of the password. And if you're like me and have an email inbox full <laughs> I of see reset what you did there. password links, then let Dashlane do the remembering for you. Dashlane is a company founded on preserving internet and... Okay, I'm going to skip this part because it's, it's you know, promotion and <clears throat> I'm just going to go straight to the credits. So, guys, go watch his videos, go support him. And I'm skipping it because I don't think you guys want to see paid promotion, right? But in any case, um, this was an interesting and insightful video, full of information. I thought he was going to come um, closer to our, you know, he, he left the story off in, in 1524. And it says part one in the, in the title. So I don't know if he's going to do a part two because, or if he has done a part two, because this video was made f three, four years ago, four years ago. So I don't think a part two is coming. <clears throat> I couldn't find part two on his channel. But if you guys know, you know, of a part two or something, let me know in the comments down below. I'm going to go um, have some rest. I have done many videos today. I think that's why my throat is acting up. <clears throat> I'll see you guys in the next video. If you have anything insightful, any video that you want me to react to, let me know in the comments. And if you're from Sweden, um, let me know how the situation is right now in terms of um, not economy, but society. <clears throat> okay, don't forget, like, subscribe, and I'll see you soon, guys. Take care now. Bye-bye. I'm going to drink some tea with honey. <laughs> see you guys. Take care.